Anybody need a copy of any? Okay, hey, welcome everybody to the uh, Orange School Committee meeting. Uh, we're going to start out, um, since this is a normal meeting, um, actually before we do that, uh, this meeting is re being recorded, if anybody else is recording it, please let us know. Uh, we're going to start out with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Okay, first up on the agenda, we have the uh, student rep update, uh, Malia and Zoe, you want to take it away? Um, yep, can you guys hear us all right? Or hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Just checking. Um, so we asked the principals about how back to school is going and everything was pretty positive. All the kids are super excited to be back at school. Um, we didn't get like we did get a couple specific responses and Malia has most of those, but um, the elementary schools were super excited to see their teachers and being new classes. And so that was pretty positive, but Malia has stuff from the Yale to like specific quotes from the kids. So Malia. Um, so Mr. Gagan got a lot of, like Zoe said, like specific quotes. Um, he talked about a lot of the kids about the start of the school year and they had a ton of different comments, which was awesome. Um, they were super excited to be back. Love seeing my friends. I love my new teachers. They are so kind. These first few days have been the best. I love all the activities we are doing right now. Great to meet and make new friendships, especially with students from the other school, JCS or LGN, because that's when they combine. Um, fifth graders said they love doing the morning announcements. Recess is great. I agree. I love getting hashtags, which is their um, PBIS incentive program. They're looking forward to band and playing an instrument. Uh, one of them got a good news call of the day and that was great. Uh, teachers in all caps. Um, and they said, and Mr. Galawa and Mr. G are very nice and it's nice to see them all around the school. And he said that that was the general kind of gist from the uh, fourth and fifth graders. So not a ton, but good that the overall response is it's going good, it's going well. So yeah, I, don't, I think that's pretty much it for us, but. Um, we have a little bit from the high school. Just like, um, I think everyone's excited to be as close to normal as possible and not having the one-way hallways, which was making travel times like crazy. But um, I think main event right now coming up is senior cruise. So I know I'm excited for that, <laughs> um, but overall pretty positive. So that's it, I guess. Yeah, I think that's the whole thing. <laughs> Hey, thanks guys, appreciate it. All right, we have short agendas tonight. We actually only have one item in our business. Uh, next up on the agenda is the discussion and vote on revision to face mask policies, uh, EDCFA for little answers uh, preschool program. Uh, just, just to be clear, one thing we're not gonna be looking at reviewing right now is anything on K-12. Uh, if, if there's anything to be done there, uh, they, they, that will not be today. Um, before, we, before we move forward with the discussion on this, uh, Dr. Bad, I want to turn it over to you just to make sure that we're clear to everybody on quarantining, et cetera, with respect to mask versus non mask. Okay. Um, everyone has at some point in the last um, few weeks before the start of school, I think it's actually the week before the start of school, we see protocols. So, Chair, requested that I just go through them to enter them into the record tonight um, as part of our meeting. So if you test positive for COVID-19, of course, you're going to stay home um, and you follow what's called protocol A. Protocol A uh, means you can return to school on day 11. And once um, your symptoms improve, improve or you are fever-free without fever reducing medicine for at least 24 hours. Um, please note that the 10-day onset um, uh, begins uh, with the symptoms. So from the day that you actually save yourself um, you know, I'm not feeling well, that's when you begin the counting process. In that handout, um, the close contact, which is called protocol B now, is an asymptomatic close contact. And these close contacts with COVID-19 infection, and you are uh, a asymptomatic and exempt from testing and quarantine, you're asymptomatic and fully vaccinated. The classroom close contact 
uh, contacts provided both individuals wear masks and at least three feet apart. The bus post contacts provided that the individual masks in bus windows were open, and there's a certain number of bus windows that have to be open. Or you have had COVID in the past 90 days. Um, then it goes into, are you exempt from testing and quarantine? Yes, you remain in school. No, does your school offer test and stay? And are you opting in? If yes, you revert to the test and stay protocol B1, which is seven days, um, and it's on school days, not extracurricular, and any extracurricular uh, on weekend days. If you say no, um, which option then you follow is you go to quarantine and a test. Um, you follow protocol B. So it goes back to announced earlier, which is a return to school on day eight, or you say no to the test and you go to protocol B3, which means you're out for 11 days and you remain in, in, asymptomatic and you can monitor through day 14. So the protocol would be, and all of that is via parental choice for anyone under the age of 18. So it's the process. Uh, we have a form we're working on right now to send out families. So the families will know from the beginning, if you say no to, um, for example, the test and stay, then this is what you have to do on your own. And students are home. If you're going to the part, uh, protocol, um, you can choose the alternative. Um, that's a parental um, decision. Um, maybe with the older students, it's you and your child. The older child makes that decision, but clearly for the younger students, who's um, more parental involvement. Protocol, protocol C is for symptomatic individuals at school and they're experiencing the symptoms and then they will do the by next now um, test again option um, if they're protocol if they're positive they go all the way back to protocol a which i announced earlier um, if they're negative they go uh, and they're presenting with any of the following symptoms fever difficulty breathing so on and so forth then it goes in a number of different directions um, of, of what you have to do based on being vaccinated um, are not vaccinated, which of course with students under the age of 12 would be the non-vaccinated. Um, and then you can return to the classroom um, once you don't have those uh, symptoms. Um, if it's a yes, uh, which option do you follow? Then again, you go into the protocol for C1, which is post symptoms and testing, and can return to school if the symptoms are improving. Protocol C2, the alternative protocol. Again, um, these are all on our website as well, um, available in um, I, ex I expect that I'll probably be sending them out pretty regularly um, as part of information to families. Um, today, um, I uh, had numerous conversations and I also had a meeting with Desi pertaining to um, one of the major uh, things that they're looking at, um, which is the idea that the contact tracing really hasn't changed that much. They're still looking at that, you know, no less than three, preferably six to 15 minutes to 24 hours. But they're not suggesting that an entire classroom is, that needs to be necessarily closed and everybody sent home for the day. We have to really do our due diligence and try to figure out. Um, for us, it actually becomes easier in areas like hallways or in areas like the gym or in areas like the cafeteria because we have a lot of, of um, cameras that are available to us within the classroom. It's basically a discussion that needs to take place between the teachers and the, and the uh, nurse's office uh, and what takes place uh, next. We are also starting the week of the 13th, reporting out to DESE on a Wednesday basis. Um, so we'll have our typical daily announcement that we do on COVID in our COVID, but DESE is now once again, collecting data and publishing that data and keeping track of that data for school systems throughout uh, the Commonwealth. I'm going to assume that that has to do with that October 1st situation. I'm gonna take a look at collecting a few weeks of data to see if there's gonna be any uh, potential uh, changes. Thank you very much for that. I'm glad it's going to be in the website. I'm sure people are going to have to look at it over That's a lot of information. Um, all right, next up, before before we go into any deliberations up here, I'm going to allow for a, a brief period of comments. Uh, I say brief because we did have a, a lengthy uh, two and a half hour plus meeting last night uh, where people were free to, to air their opinions. And, and But obviously, at this point, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of them, and I don't think there's anything that's going to change my stance on this. Um, however, I don't want to. I don't want to deny people the the opportunity to talk. They could not make last night's meeting, or if if they feel like they need to add to what we said last night. So, 
Um, very briefly, I would open it up to comments. Um, that includes the people who are, who are not physically here. If you're on Zoom and you want to say something, please uh, just um, theoretically raise your hand. There's a raise your hand button and, and let us know that you want to comment. And if anybody else in the audience wants to comment, please come up to the microphone. Okay, it seems like we do not have any comments. Um, Okay, um, so we'll, we'll open up for deliberation. Um, is there anybody on the committee that wants to, to speak on this or, or say anything? Nobody? Okay, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to briefly kind of just go through my, my thoughts on this. So if, if, I'm, if I'm really being, you know, if I'm being straight with everybody, I honestly don't. I don't think that that anybody here on this on this podium. Um, I, I won't speak for Dr. Ray or, or General, but as far as the school committee goes, I don't think anybody here, quite frankly, is is, is qualified to to know this kind of stuff. Um, you know, we're not immunologists. We don't work for the CDC, et cetera. Um, if if you were asking my my frank opinion, I would say I, I think this this whole thing has been a massive massive dereliction of, of duty by by um, by, you know, the powers that be. Um, I, I, I think that there were a lot of opportunities to make this uh, much, much clearer, much less, at least um, optically arbitrary. Uh, it may be more, more quantitative to give us some actual numbers. Here's what we need to do. Here's what we need to be. Um, so quite honestly, I, I think this is, this is a, an absolute disaster. Uh, from the top down, it was handled very, very poorly. Uh, even so much as to, you know, to Desi handing us a mandate the last I think it was unfair to us to put us in a, in a really untenable position. And quite honestly, I, I'm furious about it from, from day one. I, I think this was abject failure of leadership across the board. So with that being said, um, oh, yeah, go ahead. So I just want to, because of course I'm sitting here thinking about this, so I just really wanted to kind of get this off my chest because, you know, we were told to get vaccinated so we can go back to normal life. And listening to Dr. Bayetta talk about quarantine and contact tracing and uh, mask policy, um, <laughs> this is nothing like back to normal life. I'm, I'm disgusted with the leadership um, just everywhere. You know, these politicians wonder why there's no trust in our government. These are the reasons why. I'm, I'm so disheartened. You know, this has been a terrible, terrible time to be a school committee member. That the stress is unreal, um, and, and I just hope that people remember that. <laughs> Anybody else want to comment? Catherine, did you want to? All right, so yesterday I started my 18th year of substitute teaching. Um, I know firsthand what it's like to work in a kindergarten classroom fully masked. It's awful, and no one's denying that. It's true that most of the children, including the teachers, aren't wearing their masks properly, and it seems silly to me that snack time and lunch time seem to be an okay time to take it off. Last year, we were told that we were absolutely crazy for starting hybrid right away from the beginning, and we'd certainly have to shut down a school. But at that time, I thought, and I think most of us thought, that the importance of making sure that teachers were in front of students for any amount of time was worth, worth the risk. And I feel that way now. We have to weigh the social emotional development impact on a child with the potential health risk of a virus. Last year, we never had to close down a school. I'm hoping that we don't have to do that again this year. But after hearing a lot of talk about how flu and other sicknesses were down because of wearing masks and because of people getting vaccinated, I feel like it's setting us up to be in masks permanently, and that scares me. Okay, so um, I, I do want to address a couple of things um, that were discussed last night. Um, and, and first and foremost, I think we're going to have to discuss the idea that we can um, we can kind of get around the, the Desi and K through 12 mandate by, by instituting a, a non-discipline policy. Um, Dr. Baeta uh, spent, spent a good amount of time today 
with both Desi and, and our counsel, our legal counsel. And while I, I understand the idea that, hey, you know, we, we can just not discipline, I understand that. The problem is, is that anything you do is going to have consequences, it's going to have ramifications. And, you know, there were, there were a number of people yesterday who said, hey, you, you, you know, you serve at the pleasure of us, you serve at the pleasure of people. And, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And anybody who knows me knows, like, I honestly do feel that way. I, I very much owe my, you know, owe my duty to, to the people of this town. That being said, first and foremost, I, I have to have a duty to the school system as a whole. And it became clear in discussing this with Dr. Laetta and Desi and legal counsel that the consequences to us, to the school system, would have been extremely dire. Um, John, I don't know if you want to discuss some of those, but when we're talking about this, we're potentially very, very heavy uh, financial penalties. In some cases, uh, people's livelihoods would, would be screwed around with. And I, I just, as, as much as I don't, I don't necessarily say I, I love the mandate, you know, and as much as I would like local control back, at this point, I, I don't think that the, the right thing to do for the town is to ignore that mandate and incur those types of penalties. I know that people are going to disagree with me. I, I get it. Listen, it's it's not easy to make a decision that, that's really unpopular, uh, but unfortunately, I, I, I can't in good conscience make that type of decision and allow for you know, what, what could be potentially the, the ruination of the collapse of, of, our, of our district as a whole. So I'm, I'm not saying that anybody else up here feels that way. This is a, a decision that I'm making, and it's a decision that, that is potentially in play. I mean, it, if, if things change, if conditions on the ground change, I'm always willing to, to rethink my positions. I'm not, I'm not somebody who says, hey, I, I, was, you know, I was born on, on this day, and I, I made up my mind, and that's what I'm going to do. But, but certainly, like right now, if, if I'm looking at this, I, I don't see a, a way that we can feasibly do what people are asking us to do. Uh, there was, um, secondly, there was a request that we would reach out to Desi and, and voice our displeasure. Uh, on, on that, I, I think that that's something I am willing to do. I, I'm, I don't think I necessarily want to say, hey, I'm out of the mandate. I think what I'd be more mad about and, and what I can really get behind is again back to that local control. I think that, that Conditions in Norton and conditions in Easton and Foxborough, out to you know to the Berkshires, so conditions are different everywhere. And it would have been nice if, if they were going to take us to the last hour, if they're going to take us to the eleventh hour. It would have been nice to kind of leave it in local control. And and, and I have I have every um, I have every belief that if if others are willing up here to do it, I, I would be absolutely willing to to write a letter to that effect to Desi and say, hey, you know what, this should have been a local control question. We're disappointed about it. And request that gets returned to, to local control. They, they won't listen to us, I don't believe, but but we can certainly, you know, we can certainly make that voice heard. I know that's not necessarily what everybody wanted. I think people wanted more than that. Uh, but but at this point, that's that's what I can what I can do. So I would also be willing to uh, sign a letter going to Desi to to explain, you know, just exactly what you just said, because I feel the same way. Um, and also, I'd like to know, come October first, what what is their plan? You know, are, are they planning on continuing to take this away from us and continuing to make decisions for us, or are we going to, you know, again, like you said, be able to have control back locally? So I, I do believe that is where it belongs. Yeah, I mean, listen, in the end, the, the, you know. Pulling this stuff like they did, and, and I get it. The, the numbers change, and you have to kind of rethink things as, as you go along. But in the end, they, you know, they, they put us in a really, really bad position. They put us in a knowing position, and we're not going. To, and I'm I'm starting to become comfortable with that, and I realize that we're we're going to do the best we can do. It's what we always do. We, we make the decisions. We believe in the right decisions, and we just have to roll forward with that. So um, I I see Mr. Schleicher as a comment, so I'll let him grab the mic. Uh, Nick Schleicher, 40 Northwest District, Mount Mass. Um, I guess the school committee then, what is, what is your end goal? You know, okay, come October 1st, <laughs> we've done this for 18 months. Do we just keep sitting and getting beaten by Desi? <laughs> Do we just keep allowing our children <laughs> to keep getting railroaded every single time? When is it, when is that point that you five are going to say enough is enough, <laughs> we're, we're pushing back. And again, the letter starts, I understand, just like 
just like any letter. It's going to do the same thing. Yep, in one error, I'll do a little. Thanks for your letter. See you later. When's, when's the game time? When do we say enough is enough? <laughs> we're demanding action. <laughs> we're, we're not asking anymore. We're demanding. When, when is that point? When, when do we hit that point of our school committee, our parents, the town of Norton, area towns say enough is enough, put this back in local control, and how does it happen? Yeah, I don't think people in here disagree with you, quite honestly. Uh, you know, it's honestly what, what you're saying though is a matter of semantics, right? We can write that letter and say, hey, the requester, we can write, write that letter and say, hey, we demand it right now. And and quite honestly, in my opinion, I think it's still gonna be in one ear, out the other. I don't think you're gonna listen to this, quite frankly. And, and I don't think I don't think there's any incentive for them to right now, if I'm being honest with you. They're they're sitting up there in, in Boston or wherever they're at, maybe not too, but but they're sitting there and they're 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 doing what they want to do, and that's that. And there's, there's not really, to be honest with you, in my opinion, there's not a ton of accountability to us, to us up here. So I, I don't disagree with you. Like, I, I, I would like to get a lot of this stuff back to local control. I, I think, frankly, so, 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 no, how? <laughs> there's, these are, this is, this is not, this is our kids. These are our kids, not the state kids. <laughs> they're, they're your kids, they're our kids. How do we make that push? <laughs> To say no more. Is it? Do we need more superintendents in the district in other districts to say knock it off, put it back in? Do we need to get other parents from other towns in a you know whatever southeastern Massachusetts? We bring them down to the you know Comcast Center and we sit all down there and we put our heads together and say enough is enough. What, like what is the breaking point? We're just going to keep getting railroaded. Twelve-year-olds aren't getting vaccinated. <laughs> they can't. So what are we going to do? Be in mass for the next three years? Think about these the first graders. He's been in mass now through the end of their preschool, all through kindergarten, they're going to be all through first grade because October 1st means complete garbage. That's not going, they're just going to push it back. When, when do we get to that point where, where the town comes together and says, no, what, if we have to pull out a DESE and we got to make up $2 million because they're going to pull our funding, let's freaking do it. And I know $2 million is a lot of money. So, <laughs> so so, Mr. Slager, to answer your first question, and it's a big question. How do we change that? If, as I sit here right now, I don't, I don't know. If I'm being very honest with you, I, I don't know the answer to how to change it right now. Um, it's it, it certainly would take a groundswell. It's again, it's not something that the five of us can do, but you know, the, the Commonwealth as a whole certainly can. Um, and I would I would hope that there are other people that feel the same way and say, hey, we want to get this back to local control on that. With respect to the second question, which I, I believe to summarize was kind of when do we when do we get out of this? When do we say enough is not enough? You know, sometimes sometimes when you're fighting, you, you, you got to cover up a little bit and and wait to see the, you know, see your spot, see your we, shot. We covered up for eight months. We're in covering up anymore. <laughs> we were going on the attack. I guess That's how you got to win. And unfortunately, I, we, we need you five. We need you five to be the, the leaders of the North School Committee. We need you to get behind the parents. We need you to start throwing your way. We need Dr. Bayad or Mrs. O'Neill running with us <laughs> and making it a groundswell because it doesn't start with five people, it starts with one. And one turns into two, and two turns into four, and then four turns into 400. <laughs> Whatever we need to do, we need to figure it out. We need to, we are, we are going to keep the pressure on you. And it's not a personal attack. To me, this is this is this is you guys' jobs. This is this is us as citizens coming to you, asking for help of how can we get our children back under our control. Absolutely, we, we signed up for this year. One of us already it is our jobs. You know, at this point, we're fighting an eight hundred pound gorilla, and and we're a, I don't know a spider monkey, and that's you know it's just the reality. It's 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 a behemoth, and so unfortunately, I, I know it's not what you want to hear, but we have to find a spot, and right now. I personally, I, I don't see the spot. I don't see, I don't see the knockout punch. I don't see the way we say, "Hey, bam, you know what? We got you." It's not to say we're not looking. It's not to say we're not. You know, it, 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 if I'm being fair to Desi, until recently, I mean, I think it was fairly a fairly copacetic relationship. I, I don't think there was a lot that we were like, "Hey, these guys are really, you know, overstepping their bounds." This is a weird situation, quite frankly. You know, we're we're in, we're in uncharted territory here. I, I don't think anybody here was alive in 1918. So nobody really has, you know, survived a true pandemic. So this is this is a weird time. And, and you know, it's it's very possible that that this eventually fades away and they kind of go back and, and, and do their thing. Or it could be that this is now a new a new frontier for them. You know, I, I just don't know the answer to that. I, I, I wish I could give you more answers to what you're saying, but 
but I don't want to sit there and BS you and say, hey, this is what we, I, I, I don't know you, to be honest with you. So why don't we flow another? We just said we have cameras in hallways, uh, gymnasiums, cafeterias, whatever. I'm assuming it's not cameras in classrooms, uh, what, whatnot. Why don't we go down that route? Put masks on the kids in common areas, but in their classrooms, when they're learning, masks are off. And we don't discipline. And we don't say masks are off. We say we are strongly recommending masking because the uh, DESI is mandating those. We are mandating, however, we are not disciplining in the classrooms. So is yours. You've asked the question of somebody who served for six years on an elected school committee in my hometown, been a superintendent for 13 years, public ed for 30 years, public educated, right? This is a web between uh, of education that is very convoluted in, in Massachusetts. If you go to almost a, a lot of the other states, for example, they're county systems. Everything's run by a county system. Um, here, um, and, and by the way, with boards that have significant more power than school committees in Massachusetts and New Hampshire do, for example. Actually, Massachusetts has the power to hire and fire the superintendent. It has the power to pass policy. It has the po a power to pass um, a budget. Uh, it has a recommendation to hire on the superintendent's recommendation only by statute, the assistant superintendent, the business manager, and the sped director, and the school nurse, and the school doctor. Everybody else is under the purview of the school of the building principal to the protocol of my office. There are 4,000 bills this year that have been filed. I think I said this last night. And over 500 of them, I sit on a committee that is for MASS, the superintendent's group that has been disconnected to DESI for a long time. We, we have a not only that, but the Mass Teachers Association, the Boston Teachers Association, uh, Boston Teachers Union, I should say, and the American Federation of Teachers, those are the three big unions in, in the Commonwealth, have a different view of DESI than MASS does, than the school, school Committee Association does. It's the web, right? It depends on the topic. Superintendents are very much against unfunded mandates because they're given to us, and then we have to go to our school committees and say, how the heck are we going to implement this? That's like one of our number one things is that any bill that's filed, if we think it's going to potentially cost money, professional development, hiring more people, buying more curriculum, whatever it may be, we traditionally stay on the background and say, well, we're not, we're not saying no, but we're sure as heck not saying yes, because you're not funding. School committees in Massachusetts are appointed or elected. There's only, I believe now there's two in the entire state that are appointed, the remaining are all, uh, are all elected there. Um, Massachusetts, I think there's a, maybe a couple of school committees that are paid, but in general, in almost every suburban community, they're non paid positions, um, very much like the select one. The disconnect for me, and I don't say this uh, towards harm of any state representative and, and senator, is um, the bills that are filed are always special interest. I can't think of one that's not. They're always special interest. What happens is the committee then based on what comes down, has two avenues. They're either given the authority to vote on that issue, or they're told this is the new requirement. Those are the two options that they have. Um, there have been communities where towns haven't come to an agreement in budgets. Dighton or Holbeth is one of the most recent ones. Whitman Hansen and a number of other ones. The state takes over full receivership of the financials for that district. They only give them one month's money every month until they can come to a resolution. Probably one of the weirdest things that you can see out there. When you look at policy, this is one of the first policies that's been mandated back to schools in this way in at least the 30 years that I've been around. And I've been, like I said earlier, a very activist person at the local level in my own hometown as an elected official. Not, in other words, it's always been, here's, here's the, uh, an example of a policy, and you guys kind of go through it, consider what weeds you want to implement and which ones you don't, right? A couple of topics where that hasn't been so, this is the latest, and then there's been some issues around um, 
student safety in regards to um, sexuality, in regards to racism and all that stuff that the state has very specific uh, guidelines on. And lastly, um, there is um, the positive and sometimes negative relationship that happens with labor, where the school committee has to impact bargain any type of changes to their working conditions. So we have an administrative association, paraprofessional, which is actually part of the Norm Teachers Association, are working in that way, but they're together. That's our biggest unit. We have our custodial. Um, and then we have um, food services privatized, but they're privatized with their own company, so I don't deal with them. So any changes that you have to a policy at any point automatically impact Chapter 150E, which is a change in working conditions. That's what happened last year when we had to go into hybrid or remote, right? We had we had an impact bargain within the Teachers Association. Um, the custodians, there wasn't a whole lot of discussions. I mean, they, people were more worried about their jobs than anything else. So my point is this, so that I can stop the conversation. It is a web, and I said it last night, and one of our one of our friends last night emailed me again uh, this morning colleague that of yours that was in the audience and, and we've had really good conversations to be quite honest, um, maybe from different perspectives, but still very good conversations. And, and I said, this goes back to um, the, the decision in Massachusetts on how to distribute funding that took place when that reform came about. In order for a change, real change to be made, you're gonna have to, it's gonna have to be a lawsuit somewhere. And I know it could be contentious. I mean, if you decide to sue the Northern School Department, of course, it's going, to, it's going to get contentious as part of it. But I do think that these five people are volunteers. For them, it's like a headache that they're going to get sued if that were to happen or another school system. Other than that, it's business. It's a business. I mean, I, I've been sued numerous times as superintendent because of my role, not as an individual, but because of my role in the decision that we made as a district. So in order for, for, for you know, for you to, 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 to deal with your question, we have to find a way, regardless of your view. Um, you speak very eloquently. I actually said to somebody else last night on the views that you have, but I don't, as I said last night, I don't know if your view is actually a majority of the view of the parents of the school district. And so it's very fair. That's fair. Right, so but those so, people should be here watching their opinions. Well, you know, as you know, when, when I, I, I as, as somebody who truly believes that regardless if it's a good thing or bad thing, you need to show up. Because if this room was stacked and you really could see 50% of the people here and 50% of the people there, then you could say to yourself, holy cow, truly, whatever decision I make, I'm, I'm just a strength of 50% of the people. I mean, it is what it is. It, it's, and, and I don't say that as a negative statement to anybody who spoke last night at all. I mean, you did your due diligence. You showed up based on the views and the perspectives that you have. It even seemed like it was somewhat organized from what I saw. But, and others, there were a minority folks in here that had the different view. Um, and typically that's because of what typically happens in public education, which is things are going all right for my kid, I'm not worried about it. Things aren't going all right for my kid, I'm not worried about. It. It's not until something that all of a sudden it becomes a 10, right? Um, so, you know, I've told the committee numerous times whatever decision they have to make, my job is to carry it out. I don't have to agree with it, I have to carry it out. And um, and wouldn't be the first time in my entire career uh, that that's happened. But, um, and, and it is a contentious issue. I'm gonna be interested to see how many of the potential preschool change tonight how many of our preschool parents walk away from preschool? Specifically, either A, um, families who have severe uh, medical issues, um, and by that walk away, that would actually come back to us, or the peer models who just say, I'm gonna go somewhere else because I'm concerned about that. So I'm really interested to see if, if there is a change, is there an outcome change on the other side, or do people just say, nope, I'm just gonna go with it. And that would speak volumes as well. Thank you. Yeah, and I think back to your point, people are just going to go with it. That's what people do. People follow. <laughs> they don't want to stand up. They don't want their kid cut from the baseball team because mom and dad were at the school committee yelling at the school committee. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the God honest truth. People don't want to be shamed on, on social media. 
They have businesses in town. They don't want to lose clients based on their views. And with this view, yes, there are po politics involved because it is a hot contentious issue. That's the issue. The thing is, is I do truly believe the state did give it up when saying whether I truly do think by saying that giving the option of how to discipline and letting the, it says right in there, local districts decide this. To me, that was the ultimate state allowing us to, hey, you know what, what is the schools going to do? So again, I understand if we're going to keep the kids in mass, can we maybe think of the next idea? In classroom learning, we're not going to discipline. If they're in the hallways, they don't have their mask on, they're not listening, we'll discipline them. We need to think of something <laughs> because we can't keep doing this. We, we can't do this for a whole another year, a whole two years, three years. We have no idea how long this is going to last. It's not just, it's not a light switch. It's not magic that someone's going to walk over the wall and push the light switch and not going to be on the mask. That's not what's going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. You know, so again, from, from the citizens of Norton, maybe I am in the minority, maybe there's 10% of us. But unfortunately, we, last night we were the loudest <laughs> and we were here. And those people who just either following along, don't care which way it goes. From my conversations, just throwing out text messages to parents in town, most of them said, I don't really care. I would obviously vote for no mask, if it, but if it, I just want them in school. That was their big thing. That's what it is. So some people are like, hey, you know what? All right, if you're going to keep them in school, put a mask on them, I don't care. To me, that's, you know, that's the wrong saying. Mm -hmm. Parent choice. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. You know, it should be parent choice. And I know I understand it's not you because it was all last night. I'm gonna, you know, not touch upon that again. But again, I, I just want to know how the Norton School Committee is going to what are our next steps? You know, this can't just stop with a two-hour public forum, a vote on little answers, and then see you later. We'll just wait for the state. Uh, we will be waiting forever. So, you know, I I, I want I want to have you support it. <laughs> You know, and again, if you don't want to support, that's fine too. But you're not going to support. Come April, we are going to put up different candidates who will support because that's what that's what the public elections are for. So I'm asking the school committee, what are you doing? How can you help us? What is, you know, what what, are, what is your future plans? And and that's you know that's what I got, and that's kind of where I'm going. So, Mr. Schleicher, would you be okay if we said can we come back to you with that because? I don't think we have an answer tonight that's going to be a solid thing for the problem. Yes, I, I, think, I think we need to we need to think that through and come back to you. Because right now, I I don't have anything. Perfect. It's not to say that we never will. Yeah. When's right the next now? meeting? Three or two weeks. We need every we need theoretically every two weeks, but there are some times to take gaps. Okay. So can we say by the end of September? By think, by uh, by October first, because when when that gets all blown up and nothing changes. Okay. Do we have a plan then? Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, honestly, you know, we're going to, I think we, we were discussing having open forum at the beginning of the meetings, you know, a brief on that, or something like that. Um, if, if you feel strongly, obviously you do, you can come each one and say, hey, here we stand. You know, don't keep our feet to the fire. Don't, don't let us rest. And I, I get it. You know, listen, if, if if you don't like the job I'm doing and vote me out, I, I absolutely understand that. You know, and, and some, sometimes I say, hey, I wish people would. <laughs> Honestly, uh, more, more so this year than ever. I'll be honest with you. But um, you know, it's yeah, we we'll, we're not we're not ignoring the decisions. That, that's that's never our intention. I mean, I think Sherry might have said time, like you know, we we listen to more than anybody knows. Probably probably we listen to more than me. any government body that you ever deal with. Quite frankly, I, I think we're always receptive to hearing you guys and. We're, we're going to work towards it. I, we get what you're saying, you know, and yeah, I think it, it's likely that if you asked, you know, 100 of the, of the parents, you want your kids to wear a mask or not, I would say they not wear a mask, right? Nobody wants to. If you ask them about the mandates, it will, you know, are you going to adhere to the mandate or not? My, my guess is probably the people who say, hey, we, we don't want to adhere to the mandate are probably in, in a minority, you know, and that's okay. It, it's not to say that the minority is wrong. Sometimes the minority is right. Um, and I'm not saying that in this case people are right or wrong. I've heard a number of opinions on why we should or shouldn't do this. And there are times when I agree with those people, and there are times I disagree, even if I feel the same. Way. So we'll we'll have we'll have to come back and, and hold our feet to the fire, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Is, and and, and I, I do want to say. Uh, very briefly, and I don't want to get too bogged down because again, this is not really the, 
HM, I mean, the agenda is really anxious right now. Um, but, but I do want to say, with respect to the DESI and the weather, et cetera, so we went to DESI directly, and, and DESI said this, and Dr. Betty can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure he will. It, it is not a choice to just not discipline, it is a progressive discipline. So, so their expectation is that if you come in without a mask, you know, forgot it, whatever, we don't just simply say, you're expelled. We say, hey, we can give you a mask. If you still refuse to ask, we'll talk to parents. I think I think that's the idea of whether when and Dr. Bennett, if you want to talk to that, um, I certainly would like to. But but they told us directly this is this is not something you can you can just say, hey, we'll just we'll ignore any kind of ramifications. I I, I don't think that's that's the intention of this, and that's what they've told us directly. So you want to address that or not? If, if you don't, that's fine. No, I'll, I'll I, I mean I'll, I, I can't claim anything on the issue of October 1st or on the issues of school discipline. I know that students have been showing up to school and we haven't had any issues with it. I would anticipate um, that the next move would be a concerted effort to go in another direction. That's what I see. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Mr. Schlecker, like thanks for your comments. Sir, insightful. I appreciate it. Yes, can I make a comment? I will be very brief compared to last night. Last night, Kelly, excuse me, Kelly Gallagher, 201 Bay Road. Um, so just an idea to think about maybe. So I, I believe you guys are members of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Okay, so there's like a list, sir, right? Or some kind of, you know, like a list, sir, or some kind of email chain or something that you guys all communicate on. All right, so why not? Like, this is a strength in numbers thing. So the next point is it's going to take someone to be the leader and to, you know, have courage and be courageous for our children. So why not just send an email out to the listserv, to all the other school committees, and ask them, you know, this is what we want to do, whether it be, you know, a letter campaign or phone calls or both or, you know, some meetings or some kind of call to action where you, you don't just take this on yourself, you need strength in numbers. So why not reach out to other school committees and ask them to join you? So it's, it's you know, dozens and dozens, and hopefully, you know, a lot of school committees are joining together to push back on DESI for the kids. Thank you. Um, so I think that um, having different opinions is really important. And I think that, you know, everybody's opportunity to be open-minded really helps get a conversation started and really think about all options of a decision. Um, with that being said, I've been on the school committee for four plus years. I've been an active member of the Norton Public Schools for um, now 15 years. And last night I was not able to attend because I am a college instructor and was my first class. And I wasn't about to tell my students that I couldn't be at my very first class. I've been teaching on Wednesday evenings for the past five years. So it wasn't a surprise by anybody when that decision was made to have a meeting last night that I wouldn't be able to attend because I don't attend on Wednesday evenings anyway. With that being said, um, there was a concern that I wasn't here. So I feel like I just need to say publicly that as a parent, I have been a parent board chairperson for over 10 years at multiple schools in this district. I have sat on multiple search committees for our superintendent who's currently sitting and for multiple school principals, both at the Yale, at the JCS, and at the middle school. Um, I was active in building a playground at JCS and I fundraised over $80,000 at JCS to have a new playground built? Well, some of it was already there before I started. Um, as a school committee member, I am active with the role of that. I go to every meeting. I think in my four plus years, I may have missed three meetings. Um, and I just want to publicly say 
that nothing about this role by me is taken for granted. So um, I have visited the state house. I have been involved in different presentations and conferences with the Mass Association School Committees. I work diligently with our staff. I am on multiple committees, and I feel that I have a deep connection with the school department, with the administrators, and hopefully with many of the teachers. So I felt like I really needed to say that publicly. It was so hurtful um, that anybody could suggest that me being, not being here last night was my disrespect for the conversation or for the events that are happening. I also want to say um, that for every single email, and, and I should also preface that in the four plus years on the school committee, including last year during COVID when I was the chairperson, I don't think that I have received as many emails from parents voicing their opinions and their thoughts and their ideas on this topic. And I want to sort of publicly state that there are just as many emails coming from parents who are supporting the mandate as there are for parents who are not supporting the mandate. With that being said, I'm not sure um, the threat of litigation is the best way to have the conversation. I think that one of the things that I know is that as a school committee, we always strive to do what is best. We are guided by our leaders. We're guided by state. We're guided by um, conversations we have individually with staff, with administrators, with each other in individual moments of conversation. Nothing about this has been anything that we have taken for granted, that we haven't thought about, we don't always agree, but our goal is always to do what is best for the school department, for the school district as a whole, and for children. Um, so earlier today, I received an email, as did the rest of the committee, from a parent who said that she was um, a remote member last night and had, um, Jen, I'm sorry, she had made a comment that she wasn't recognized. I don't know if there was a problem. It seemed like there was a couple of parents who were trying to make a comment and um, her email, and I do have permission to read her email. I was a remote participant in last night's school committee. Oh, and she also gave me permission to state her name is Jill Blake. I was a remote participant in last night's school. I don't know the address. Godfrey Farm Road. Gaffney Farm Road. Thank you. Um, I was a remote participant in last night's school committee open forum. I submitted a statement last night through the QA feature, but I'm unsure if it was received since um, or noted as I never received confirmation. Um, my statement last night read. Please know that my family and my Norton High School student fully support the enforcement and upholding of the DESE and statewide pre-K mask mandate. We know that the masking pro protects our littlest Lancers, our staff, and our older students, and our larger community. Breakthrough cases are real, and COVID is highly contagious. A mask that acts as a barrier is scientifically, scientifically proven way to protect ourselves and others. I would like to add that I implore you as public employees and elected town officials to uphold the statewide mandate in its entirety with consequences for non-compliance. We feel that anything less would be no different than not adhering to and thus not following the mandate. There are already well, there are already well thought out, clearly outlined procedures for those who require a medical or behavioral exemption. We implore you to listen to the scientific facts put forth by the Centers for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, and the American Pediatric Association. Thank you, Jill Blake. Um, so I'm not suggesting that I have to agree with everything that is being sort of shared with me by email, but I just want everybody to know that there are just as many families, maybe not as vocal, maybe not at the meeting last night, who are also sending us emails Again, in the four plus years I've been on the school committee, I don't think I have received so many emails 
from so many parents. So I just want to make sure that everybody is aware, as Dr. Vallada said, if we were to put everybody in a room, we may sort of see a very significant divide, 50% who are supporting a mask mandate and 50% who are not. So for every person um, who tells us that we are, if, if we don't vote a certain way, that we're not supporting them, just recognize that there's a group of individuals who also, by us voting a certain way, recognize us not supporting them. Okay, I was going to wait until our other business, but um, after Mrs. Gallagher, I, I feel like this is more appropriate now. Um, I'd like to apologize to my colleagues because last night at the forum, we were advised by council to listen to what the people had to say, but not to respond except to say thank you for your comments. I tried my best, but once I found my colleagues and I were accused of not caring about our elected positions, the education of our children, and not putting children and teachers safety first, I could not stay silent. It's the only reason why we take this position. I assure you that may not be the case in every school committee, but it certainly is with ours. I'd also like to mention that more than one person said parents should have been asked about what they thought about the masking situation. I don't know about anybody else, but I have never been asked by a selectman, a governor, a congressman, or a senator how I felt about a decision that they were getting ready to make. If I felt strongly about a matter, I would contact them and let them know how I feel about the situation as their constituent, which is how over 25 emails in the last week, I believe, from the townspeople obviously did the same thing. So to be accused of not asking people what they thought, if you can show me a congressman that goes around and knocks on people's door to ask them what they think or sends them an email to ask them what they think, then I, then I would agree with you, but I know from what the town has done for us or to us with emails, um, I believe that that's the situation, not for us to go out and ask the opposite. Mr. Schleimer, I'll be super quick. Ms. Gallagher, I think the big thing here is there was no communication, no transparency that you weren't going to be here. So when you get into a meeting, knowing it's gonna be a highly contentious matter, and there's four people rather than five in an empty seat. If if we knew, obviously if we were, hey, given uh, you know, you know, Mrs. Savas said, hey, listen, we are missing a member tonight. She is doing X, Y, and Z. It would have stopped that nonsense right from the beginning. You can't just expect us to walk in, not have a school committee member there, and we have no idea why you're not there. You know, that was the thing. And again, I'm not personally attacking you. I I know you've been very, you know have done your due diligence in town. Um, but again, that's what I said last night was like, she should be here. If that wasn't the case, we should have known that ahead of time, you know? Uh, so that's one big thing. Two, though I do agree with you, you know, uh, about, you know, congressmen don't walk around asking their constituents what they think on a matter. No, but they do have websites, they have stances, they do debates. We don't really do that here, no. you know? You guys sent out a survey last year about, um, remote hybrid, you know, two parents. That was never sent out about masking, unmasking, and every other mandate we want to talk about. So there is a little bit of communication and lack of transparency when it comes to the school committee and the, and the members of what's happening. That's it. I'm, I'm going to just address that really quickly then and move on because we're start, starting to devolve into kind of a finger pointing. I'm not sure we're on topic anymore. The topic is really the little answers, but um, with respect to that, Mr. Mr. Schleicher, we, we have meetings, you know, I mean, whatever, 10 months of the year. There are occasions when people can't make it. Um, we, we never say, hey, so-and-so is not going to be here, and here's why. As long as we have three members, we have enough to pass a vote. That's all we need. Uh, with respect to why they're not here, I mean, sometimes they're personal matters, and quite honestly, I wouldn't be comfortable saying that anyways. But but I understand what you're saying. I just, just realized that it's it's not common practice, but kind of thing. But anyways. Okay, if if there are no other comments on the little answers program, I'm going to move it forward here. Are there any any more comments by uh... Mr. Chairman? Just through you for the record, um, if you decide to make a change, I would respect that the change be effect on the 13th, which is Monday, allowing me the opportunity to send the new policy out to all families tomorrow. That's actually not going to be how it's going to work. Okay, because there there are other 
there are other factors to play here as well. So, okay, uh, I, I appreciate what you're saying, and it's going to actually jump up if, if in fact we make a change. I think it's not going to be behind that um, for, for a couple of reasons. I'll, I'll go into this discussion. Thank you. All right, any any comments from the school make? No, okay. Um, you know, I, I think we all at this point have had enough time to, to think it through. I know for myself, I was up from two o'clock on last night thinking about this. It, it, that's been my life for the past couple of weeks, quite frankly. Um, I, I know how I felt about this question as a whole for, for quite a while. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's time at this point to move forward. Um, to Joe's point, uh, a couple a couple of thoughts. First of all, uh, obviously we need, we need a transition period here to make sure that we can get the word out. Um, one of the things, Joe, also is, I, I think this is gonna have to be something that parents sign off on if we do in fact do that. Because it can't be up to the kid to walk in and say, I don't want a mask. I think the, the parent needs to, to tell you, hey, my child does not require a mask. You okay with that, Joe? Yeah. For the sake of consistency, yes, simply because I keep hearing about parent choice and so on and so forth. And I don't want somebody to be in the classroom all day and they weren't supposed to, they weren't supposed to be wearing and they right. would have vice versa. Right. right. I don't I want parents to come back and say, hey, they were. You know, you unmask my child. So, um, and, and the second thing is, is, uh, is uh, something Joe, you may have alluded to it earlier. Uh, if we do make a change here, um, the Norton Teachers Association is um, by right and by duty, I think, needs to impact bargaining this. And quite honestly, we can't make a change like this if I don't know what the cost is going to be. So we're going to have to go to those guys and at least hash it out. We don't know how long it's going to take. Um, what I would suggest is maybe, um, Maybe set the date for our next meeting. If that's if that's okay, and if we can get through that by then, great. Um, with the idea that if we get through it faster, we can always move the date up. Um, but if not, we need to be able to to delay it. Okay. Is that yeah? Yeah, that's 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 going to require two of you. Representative, I believe, is you and Ms. Gallagher yeah. um, with the FDA. So setting up a meeting. Yeah, Shannon, I don't want to put you on the spot. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have to do what we have to do. Just, I mean, I'm talking about a little bit more of a, um, a short, short negotiation, just kind of, kind of get through as fast as we can. So we can. No, that's okay. It's, it's, so, yeah, we have, we have a community, we have a process. There's a lot that needs to go into it, both that I don't know what's going on. Right. And, and if there's anything, we are willing to start and to do the effort. All right. And, and as always, I appreciate that and great to work. Uh, okay. So, um, Without any other conversation, uh, I would entertain a motion to change the current masking policy to read um, masks required five and above, strongly encouraged and recommended for under five. Is that? Oh, you know, somebody, somebody. <laughs> So, so change the current policy to be under five masks are recommended not under five. Recommended. All right, I would entertain motion uh, thusly. Second. Okay, uh, and Joe, we're all here. We don't need a roll call vote, is that correct? Yes, just for the public. But we do need a roll call. Yes, please. Okay. Um, all those in favor of Ms. Gallagher. Uh, you know, can you ask me when you're going to use this into the mics? Yes. Mrs. Stern? Yes. Mrs. Cohen? Yes. Mr. Sheedy? Yes. And me, Mr. Savas? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, I think uh, that is the entirety of our agenda today. Other than other business, does anybody have any other business? 
There are a few questions, if you don't mind. Um, I just want to make sure that we're recognizing the people that are online. Um, first off, thank you for keeping the health and safety of all students a priority. At the end of the day, keeping the safety of students, staff, and everyone in the building matters most, not what, not what the parents want politically. As a teacher, parent, community resident, I haven't come across one child who is bothered, angry, or not wanting to go to school because of a mask. To try to be equitable with creating masked rooms and unmasked rooms and limit contact among the kids and staff. I think that was something that was discussed last night as well. Can you hear me, Dennis? Okay. So I think that was just a comment. I want to make sure that we're recognizing. Um, the other, there is a question though, if a child turns five in preschool, would that child be required to wear a mask? My assumption would be my guess is the other day would be. If, if children disagree or if our legal counsel does, we can ask the counsel, but I would assume that they demand it applies to me. If your vote was um, based on the age, then your policy is based on the age. So you could amend your policy to say, unless still age five and in little answers preschool. But I, 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 I would I, I, hopefully nobody's ten and five in the next two weeks. Let me take a look at the data, and I'll send it to you right away. I'll ask for the program to give us who turns going to turn right because it may not be much of an impact, or it could be a significant and, impact. And I would also, I see some people shaking their heads. They want to do that, but I would prefer just not to do that because it, it, again, it, it is against what the and it says, and I. I get it. I'm sure it's not a popular, but no one's clapping down. Right? <laughs> but yeah, I, I think at the very least we should do clarification on that. But um, it's because they may they may fully intend to be okay. Um, but we should we should know that. Jen, you got any more? That's it. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, tomorrow I will just seek legal counsel and advice to you as it pertains to that age five and under versus my recommendation. Yeah. My wasn't a recommendation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I understand where you're coming from, so we should talk across these and dot eyes. Yeah, 100%. Okay, any other, any other business? Seeing no business, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. All those in favor, Ms. Gallagher. Aye. Aye. I actually, I actually need to read your names off my so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna start that again. All those in favor, Mrs. Gallagher. Aye. Mrs. Stern. Aye. Mrs. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Sheehy. Yes. Mr. Savas. Yes. Good night. Thank you for coming, folks. Thanks, everyone.